And I can tell you, some of the candidates they went in, they didn't know the air conditioner didn't work. They sweated like dogs. They didn't know the room was too big because they didn't have anybody there. How are they going to beat ISIS? I don't think it's going to happen. When did we beat Japan at anything? They send their cars over by the millions. And what do we do? When was the last time you saw a Chevrolet in Tokyo? It doesn't exist, folks. They beat us all the time. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. And now they're beating us economically. They are not our friend, believe me. But they're killing us economically. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It only makes common sense. They're sending us not the right people. It's coming from more than Mexico. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably, probably from the Middle East. But we don't know, because we have no protection, and we have no competence. We don't know what's happening. And Islamic terrorism is eating up large portions of the Middle East. They become rich. I'm in competition with them. They just built a hotel in Syria. Can you believe this? They built a hotel. When I have to build a hotel, I pay interest. They don't have to pay interest because they took the oil that when we left Iraq, I said we should have taken. So now ISIS has the oil. And what they don't have, Iran has. Last quarter, it was just announced, our gross domestic product, a sign of strength, right? But not for us. It was below zero. Who ever heard of this? It's never below zero. Our labor participation rate was the worst since 1978. But think of it, GDP below zero. Horrible labor participation rate. And our real unemployment is anywhere from 18 to 20 percent. Don't believe the 5.6. Don't believe it. That's right, a lot of people up there can't get jobs. They can't get jobs, because there are no jobs. Because China has our jobs, and Mexico has our jobs. They all have our jobs. But the real number, the real number, is anywhere from 18 to 19 and maybe even 21 percent. And nobody talks about it because it's a statistic that's full of nonsense. Our enemies are getting stronger and stronger by the day, and we as a country are getting weaker. Even our nuclear arsenal doesn't work. It came out recently. They have equipment that's 30 years old. They don't even know if it worked. And I thought it was horrible when it was broadcast on television because, boy, does that send signals to Putin and all of the other people that look at us and they say, that is a group of people and that is a nation that truly has no clue. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. Obamacare kicks in in 2016. Really big leg. It is going to be amazingly destructive. Doctors are quitting. I have a friend who's a doctor, and he said to me the other day, Donald, I never saw anything like it. I have more accountants than I have nurses. It's a disaster. My patients are beside themselves. They had a plan that was good. They have no plan now. We have to repeal Obamacare, and it can re be replaced. And, and it can be replaced with something much better for everybody. Let it be for everybody but much better and much less expensive for people and for the government. 
and we can do it. The greatest jobs president that God ever created. I tell you that. I'll bring back our jobs from China, from Mexico, from Japan, from so many places. I'll bring back our jobs and I'll bring back our money. Right now, think of this. We owe China $1.3 trillion. We owe Japan more than that. So they come in, they take our jobs, they take our money, and then they loan us back the money and we pay them an in interest. And then the dollar goes up so their deal's even better. How stupid are our leaders? How stupid are these politicians to allow this to happen? How stupid are they? They're building up their military to a point that is very scary. You have a problem with ISIS, you have a bigger problem with China. And in my opinion, the new China, believe it or not, in terms of trade, is Mexico. Ford, good company. So I announced that I'm running for president. I would, one of the early things I would do, probably before I even got in, and I wouldn't even use, you know, I have, I know the smartest negotiators in the world, but I know the best negotiators in the world, and I'd put them one for each country. Believe me, folks, we will do very, very well. Very, very well. But I wouldn't even waste my time with this one. I would call up the head of Ford, who I know, if I was president. I'd say, congratulations. I understand that you're building a nice $2.5 billion car factory in Mexico, and that you're going to take your cars and sell them to the United States. Zero tax. Just flow them across the border. And you say to yourself, how does that help us, right? How does that help us? Where is that good? It's not. So I'd say, Congratulations, that's the good news. Let me give you the bad news. Every car and every truck and every part manufactured in this plant that comes across the border, we're going to charge you a 35% tax. Okay? And that tax is going to be paid simultaneously with the transaction. And that's it. Because I don't need anybody's money. It's nice. I don't need anybody's money. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists. I'm not using donors. I don't care. I'm really rich. I'll show you that in a second. And by the way, I'm not even saying that in a bragging. That's the kind of mindset, that's the kind of thinking you need for this country. So, because we got to make the country rich, it sounds crass. Somebody said, oh, that's crass. It's not crass. We got 18 trillion in debt. We got nothing but problems. We got a military that needs equipment all over the place. We got nuclear weapons that are obsolete. We've got nothing. We got Social Security that's going to be destroyed if somebody like me doesn't bring money into the country. All these other people want to cut the hell out of it. I'm not going to cut it at all. I'm going to bring money in, and we're going to save it. But here's what's going to happen. After I'm called by 30 friends of mine who contributed to different campaigns. After I'm called by all of the special interests and by the, the donors and by the lobbyists, and they have zero chance at convincing me, zero. I'll get a call the next day from the head of Ford. He'll say, please reconsider. I'll say, no. He'll say, Mr. President, we've decided to move the plant back to the United States. We're not going to build it in Mexico. That's it. They have no choice. They have no choice. Saudi Arabia, without us, is gone. They're gone. And I'm the one that made all of the right predictions about Iraq. You know, all of these politicians that I'm running against now, I, it's so nice to say I'm running as opposed to if I run, if I run, I'm running. But all of these politicians that I'm running against now, they're trying to disassociate. I mean, you looked at Bush, it took him five days to answer the question on Iraq. He couldn't answer the question. He didn't know. I said, is he intelligent? Then I looked at Rubio. He was unable to answer the question. Is Iraq a good thing or a bad thing? He didn't know. He couldn't answer the question. How are these people going to lead us? How are, we gonna, how are we going to go back and make it great again? We can't. They don't have a clue. They can't lead us. They can't. 
They can't even answer simple questions. It was terrible. But Saudi Arabia is in big, big trouble. This is going to be an election, in my opinion, that's based on competence. Somebody said, thank you, darling. But Mr. Trump, you're not a nice person. That's true. But actually, I am. I think I am a nice person. People that know me like me. Does my family like me? I think so, right? Look at my family. I'm proud of my family. So the reporter said to me the other day, but Mr. Trump, you're not a nice person. How can you get people to vote for you? I said, I don't know. I said, I think that, number one, I am a nice person. I give a lot of money away to charities and other things. I think I'm actually a very nice person. But I said, this is going to be an election that's based on competence. But we're becoming a third world country because of our infrastructure, our airports, our roads, everything. So, just to sum up, I would do various things very quickly. I would repeal and replace the big lie Obamacare. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. Nobody would be tougher on ISIS than Donald Trump. Yeah. Nobody. I will find, within our military, I will find the General Patton, or I will find General MacArthur, I will find the right guy. I will find the guy that's going to take that military and make it really work. Nobody, nobody will be pushing us around. I will stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons. And we won't be using a man like Secretary Kerry that has absolutely no concept of negotiation, who's making a horrible and laughable deal, who's just being tapped along as they make weapons right now, and then goes into a bicycle race at 72 years old and falls and breaks his leg. I won't be doing that. And I promise I will never be in a bicycle race. That I can tell you. I will immediately terminate President Obama's illegal executive order on immigration, immediately. Fully support and back up the Second Amendment. Bush is totally in favor of Common Core. I don't see how he can possibly get the nomination. He's weak on immigration. He's in favor of Common Core. How the hell can you vote for this guy? You just can't do it. Rebuild the country's infrastructure. Yeah. Nobody can do that like me, believe me. It will be done on time, on budget, way below cost, way below what anyone ever thought. We have to rebuild our infrastructure, our bridges, our roadways, our airports. You come into LaGuardia Airport, it's like we're in a third world country. You look at the patches and the 40-year-old the floor, they throw down asphalt and they throw, you look at these Airports, we are like a third world country. And I come in from China, and I come in from Qatar, and I come in from different places. And they have the most incredible airports in the world. You come back to this country, and you have LAX, disaster. You have all of these disastrous airports. We have to rebuild our infrastructure. Save Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cuts. Have to do it. Get rid of the fraud, get rid of the waste and abuse, but save it. People have been paying in for years, and now many of these candidates want to cut it. You save it by making the United States, by making us rich again, by taking back all of the money that's being lost. And strengthen our military and take care of our vets. So, so important. Sadly, the American dream is dead. 
But if I get elected president, I will bring it back bigger and better and stronger than ever before, and we will make America great again. Thank you. Thank you very much.